I don't know about you, but I want to experience more of God's love. And this is uh, uh, an amazing passage which teaches us how we can get more of God's love. What we need to do in order to get more of God's love. And I'm just going to unpack that for us so that we can go away and get more of God's love. Do you know that you are loved for God? I wonder what your experience of God's love is so far. Um, uh, and how much you've experienced God's love. You may be sitting there and you've never even experienced God's love. You've never at all experienced this unconditional, amazing love from God. You may be uh, sitting there and you have experienced God's love, you heard God's love, but actually you're still, you've had a lot of people put you down. You've had a lot of people in your life put, uh, speak negative things over you and make you feel small and stupid. And that affects uh, the way you can, you can walk into the love of God. And it kind of like, it's just kind of stopping you realise how amazingly and unconditionally loved that you are. Maybe you know God's love, but actually no one would be able to tell that you know God's love. Because you, you have experienced God's love, but maybe it's gone a little bit quiet uh, in, your, in your heart. Maybe it hasn't, it's not really fully there. Maybe you've forgotten um, how, uh, how amazingly powerful um, it is. Or maybe you're sitting there and you're just full of God's love and you're excited about that. Either way, we can always have more of God's love. This talk is for everybody, whatever situation you are, whether you're completely and utterly in love with God, you, you have his, his spirit full, full of you daily, um, or whether you've never experienced at all. Because uh, this is about how we can get more of God's love. This passage starts with the fact that God is love, and that love comes from God. That is the starting point, verse 7 and 8. Uh, God is love, and love comes from God. We have relationships with other people. We do have people in our lives where, uh, that show us love. Uh, but actually, the ultimate love and real love comes from God. As God uh, is a God that completely loves us. He, his character and everything he does is out of love. Because he absolutely loves you to bits, to pieces. He made you and created you, and he wants to show you his, his love. And this passage just highlights two ways um, that God shows us, has shown us his love. Just to kind of, I guess, set him apart from any other love that we would experience uh, in life. Uh, the, first, uh, the first point I make is in verse 9. Jesus is the creator of the universe. He is all-powerful. He is almighty. He can do anything. He can go what, where he wants and do what he wants. He is complete in himself. He is an all-powerful God. Yet because he loves you, he chose to become a fetus in the womb of a teenage girl. To grow in the womb for nine months um, in that vulnerable state. Then to, be given, then to be given birth to in a stable. To live a life of submission to God and submission to his parents. Jesus chose to give up everything that he had, which we can't fully appreciate, because um, I'm sure it is much more than we can even ask or imagine. He gave up that because he loves you. He, um, he gave up, he was humble, he was a son, he submitted himself. Jesus is dying to show you his love. And in verse 10, it talks about the fact that he gave up his life for you. That Jesus loves you so much that he was willing to give up his life. To be mocked, to be spat at, to be whipped, to be abused, and then ultimately to be crucified on the cross. He died because he loves you. God, love, God is love, and love comes from God. And everything that we know about love can be found in God. God has proved to us that he completely and utterly loves us. Do you know 
that you are completely and utterly loved. There's nothing that you can do and there's nothing you need to do in order to be loved by God. Christianity is not a religion where we have to do things and follow certain rules so that we can be loved by God. We don't have to do things. We don't believe in karma that we do good things and good things will come to you. But actually, we don't need to do anything uh, in order to receive God's love. God is an un uh, has unconditional love for you, whatever you do, whether you never, never do anything for him, whether you go around killing Christians and then repent uh, later. God, God, well, whatever, God loves you. And that is a great starting point. Just the knowledge and knowing that you're loved by God is great. Um, the next point that I think this passage highlights is that actually we, can, we don't have to just know that. We can receive that love. We can receive that God, um, that love from God. Uh, God came to us, uh, to earth, to show us his love. He died for us and now he wants to live in us so that we can experience uh, his love. If, verse 15, if we acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he lives in us. And in verse 30, we live in him and he lives in us. If we agree that Jesus is God and we accept him as our Lord and Saviour, we can experience the love of God. And I hope, I hope and pray that you have experienced that love. You don't just know that you're loved by God, but you've experienced that love of God. Um, it is really quite amazing to not just know, but to experience God. So in fact, there's nothing else like the love of God and experiencing God's love. There's nothing better than experiencing God's love, apart from one thing. There's one thing that's better that this passage uh, that teaches us better than experiencing God's love. And that's this. We can express God's love to other people. We can express that love that we've received to other people. And the reason why that's even better, I will explain in a minute. Just a couple of verses. Verse 7. Uh, Let us love one another, for love comes from God. And since God loves us, we ought to love one another. In a sense, we ought to love one another. It sounds like uh, it's a command, but actually, it's a real privilege. A real privilege. See, a couple of months ago, I brought Xbox Connects, uh, and it's, I was really excited about this. For those of you who don't know, haven't seen the adverts, uh, it's a kind of a, a video thing where you don't need a controller because you are the controller. So if you want to, if you want to hit the ball if you're playing tennis, for example, you can swing your hand. I would not knock a guitar over. You can swing your hand and, and your little character that looks a little bit like you uh, swings the character and you can actually uh, be a star at Wimbledon from your front room. And so I brought Xbox Connect and took it home. Before I even plugged it in, I went on Facebook. I have Xbox Connect. It's really exciting. I wanted people to know. As soon as I had an experience of it, I invited my friends around. Guys, have a go. And that's just Xbox Connect. Uh, maybe you've had new things, new toys or things, you've, you've, you've got it and you want people to know. Actually, if you keep it to yourself, it's not as exciting. So actually, telling, showing people God's love is an amazing, it's, it's an amazing privilege. And the reason that it's better than actually just receiving God's love, because two amazing things and profound and spiritual things happen when we share that love of God with people. The first thing, that that love is made complete in us. That God's love is made complete in us when we share that love with other people. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete um, in us. So if we love one another, he lives in us and his love is made complete in us. And then that was verse 12. And then verse 15. In this way, love is made complete amongst us. So actually, if we're loving one another, first thing, God, God's love is made complete in us. And the next thing is God's love is made complete amongst us. Actually, there's a tangible experience of God's love in us and amongst us. That's why you can get people come through the doors and just go, oh, you know, there's such peace here. 
you know, you guys are all really nice people, aren't you? Uh, it's not because we're nice, it's because they can see God's love. They're experiencing that actually God's love is in this room. God's love is in this room. I can tell, I'm sure you can as well, uh, that it's not just we're just the happen to be a bunch of good people, that uh, actually just we're just the nicest people around. Actually, uh, it's not, that's not the case at all. Sorry to uh, disillusion you, but actually it's because God's love is here. So the first thing is, is God's love is made complete in us. So um, just a little illustration. If I brought you your favourite car and I, I pulled it up and I drove it into your garage, shut the door and gave you the keys and then occasionally you went out and looked at it, uh, you would own your favourite car but you wouldn't be fully experiencing that car. You wouldn't be able to drive it around a, a, a racetrack or things. You wouldn't really be, you'd still own it, you'd still have it, you'd still possess, possess it, but you wouldn't be experiencing it to the full. If I gave you a present and you didn't open it, or an energy bar and you didn't eat it, you wouldn't be fully experiencing it. We can fully experience the love of God when we actually share that love with other people because God's love is made complete in us. We, we can meet with God through worship, through singing songs, through adoration, and that's amazing. But we can also meet with God through showing our love with other people. And some of the times when I felt the closest to God is when I've... Have you ever done that? You've shared your love with people, you've just given them a cup of tea and they'd be really grateful. You've just had that, wow, just like a real buzz. You could skip home because uh, it's so exciting. Um, because you're actually uh, uh, um, experiencing God's love in a deeper level. His love is being made complete in you through what you're doing. That's why it's so good to see so many of you involved in the things that your church is involved in. And the second thing that is really exciting about what happens when we share God's love with other people is that God is revealed. The invisible God is revealed through our actions. Uh, verse 12, no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Actually, as we love other people, as we go around loving and sharing, God is revealed. People can see God in us. And um, so we know God's love. We know God's love. We experience God's love. And then we express God's love to others and his love is made complete in us. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that, isn't that exciting that we can know and experience and express the love of God and see people see God and, and experience and receive what you have? Now, just so you know that um, although we get to show God's love to other people, we are not God. Just to, just to kind of shatter any false illusions, if you, if you know me, uh, I will let you down at some point. At some point in your life, I will let you down. I maybe say something that, that you take the wrong way, or maybe I will, I will treat you not as you should. But actually, although I have been given God's love, and I, and I get to share God's love with you, we all actually also hurt people. We can, we can go into a church and then see God's love and experience God's love and think that's amazing. But as you get to know people, actually people hurt you and people let you down. And we have difficulties and we have struggles. That is reality, you know. We are not perfect. We are, we are although we, you can see God's love in, in each other, we are broken people. Like, uh, I, I am able to do amazing things for God because of God, not anything to do with me. Actually, you can look at me and think, oh, that's a nice, he's a good person. Yeah, he can do amazing things. But actually, I'm just as hurt and broken and suffering and evil as the rest of us. And actually, sometimes, have you ever seen people that have actually really hurt you and done really, really things that are just really difficult, but actually you see God use them in amazing ways and, to, and do, do really great things? And sometimes you can be like, oh, so annoying. You know, why is God using them? Because they've hurt me so much. But the reality is that's a good thing because actually, if we look at ourselves really, uh, if we look at our motives and what we've done, we hurt people, yet God still... God still wants to use us to love, love other people because we're all his gods. And actually, if you have, if you know that you're loved by God, that also means that God has given you that love for a reason and a purpose. 
And the reason the purpose is, is to share it with those in your church and those outside your church and to make that love complete and that joy. It doesn't matter what you've done, how much you mess up. Um, if you read, just you look, read in the, just look at the Bible, for example. So there, are, there are hundreds of examples of people that are doing amazing things for God, but then completely mess up, but then God still uses them. We all, we all make mistakes. And um, if God loves and accepts us and uses us anyway, then we need to love and accept each other.